I'm Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Colorado Blue Columbine step-by-step -step instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the Colorado Blue Columbine using Nature Sketch Creates step-by-step -step painting instructions. First, collect your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, have fun, and don't worry too much if you think you may have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. Make sure you tape the transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper without covering up anything that you want to transfer. So if you're going to transfer these whole punch lines, make sure to put the tape in a different spot to hold it down. And then take your graphite transfer paper, dark side down, light side up. And as you can see, I've already used this before. You can use it many, many times. Place it dark side down onto the watercolor paper and then gently press it flat. Take your pencil and go ahead and get started on transferring lines anywhere you like. And I'm just going to transfer these on the edge here, just one little line using about a medium pressure. And then I will check to see how that transferred. It looks like it transferred dark enough. You'll want it to be dark enough that you can see it once you put some watercolor on it because you're going to be redrawing it at the end. So once you've checked that your lines are actually transferring, go ahead and start anywhere you like and trace over all of those lines. You can put on a podcast or maybe an audiobook or maybe some music and just take your time and relax. And if you get interrupted, you can always stop at any point, set this to the side and get back to it another time. Once you think you've transferred all the lines, go ahead and flip the image while gently holding a corner up and down and double check to see that you've added all of those lines. If you don't have all of them, it's totally fine. You can always add them later. But it helps to have more. I always seem to be missing at least a couple. What I do is I look, every time I flip up, I move my eyes down each time to a different spot. I think I've got most of them, if not all of them, transferred. And this is totally optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the common name and the scientific name. The tip of my pencil is not quite as thick as the common name text, so I'll just outline the inside of the text. And then I'll write in the scientific name, just tracing directly over it because my pencil tip is about the same or a little bit bigger. When you have all the lines transferred, go ahead and remove the graphite transfer paper and you can save that for later. And remove the tape gently from the back of the watercolor paper. You can find a clean spot on your kneaded eraser by kneading it. Make sure it's this light gray color. If you have a dirty eraser using a dirty spot, it might leave smudges on your painting or on your paper. And you can use this to lighten marks by dabbing or rub it to erase any leftover graphite marks that you don't want. Make sure to remove the tape from the transfer image. And if you end up having kind of messy tape like that, you can go ahead and compost it or throw it in the garbage but I recommend reusing it if you don't end up getting any of that paper up. 
be used several times before throwing it away. And you'll want to use this image to protect your painting from hand marks and smudges while you're working on it, or maybe even uh, splatters from paint when you're mixing it. So go ahead and keep that to the side so you can use it while you're creating your painting. And now we can move on to step two. Step two, paint in Columbine blue and yellow. So first mix the Columbine blue with five drops of the 8H Ultramarine. Make sure to shake it up to make sure the paint pigment is well mixed. One, two, three, four, five. And two drops of the Brilliant Cadmium Red 3H. One, two. It's actually labeled as Brilliant Cad Red. Mix that up with a little bit of water, just a tiny bit. And we're gonna be using both a really wet and light and a dry dark and then this super dark driest color. And when I'm referring to dry dark or wet light, I'm referring to the amount of water added to it in your palette, making it lighter or darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to one. Once I had some on my brush already, I'm just moving it to the side. I'm gonna take that and just go ahead and add more water whatever's left over on my brush. Maybe add yeah, just even a little bit more. So I have a few colors just here on my palette. And dab your brush off onto your towel and test it on your paper. And that looks pretty good, maybe a little dark. So I'm gonna just clean my brush off completely to make sure there isn't too much paint pigment in my brush from when I mixed it. Pick up a little bit more of that paint maybe adding a little bit of water, and then testing it out again. And that looks a little bit better. I think just a tiny bit more water. With watercolor, it's better to work on with a lighter color and something that's not too dark because it's very hard to take watercolor off of a painting. Let's add a little bit more water. Dab it off my towel one more time, test it out. It's still really dark. It might be similar, but I think some of the color is bleeding, so I'm just gonna start at a new spot. So I can add even more water. Maybe bring it to the edge of my palette here. Dab it on my towel and test it again. Sometimes it takes a while. It's a little bit more of what I'm looking for, maybe a little tiny bit darker. It takes a little bit of trial and error. That looks good, finally. Sometimes it takes a while. Dabbed up, picked up some more and dabbed it off onto my towel. And now I'm going to go ahead and add that to these transfer lines on the inner petals. It's hard to see very faint in your final reference image. And then I'm also gonna add it to each of these spurs. And this petal. And then just these lines on this petal. So just on over the transfer lines, kind of like you're tracing over it. And put on the back of this petal there too. Go ahead and add it to these rest of the spurs. And go ahead and dab your brush off. No need to clean it because I'm just moving on to a little bit of the same paint. So taking this same color, just adding a little bit of water to it. I want it to be super dark. Dab it on my towel and testing it again. It might take a little bit to get the right color. Still looks a little dark. I 
I like that, that looks like the right color to me. And then I'm just going to add it over each one of the sepals. So, just painting it right in. You got too much water, just dab it onto your towel. And then I'm going to clean off my brush and mix the Columbine Yellow. So the Columbine Yellow is just the Hansa Yellow Medium. Make sure to shake that up with some water added to it. So one, two, putting two and drops into my palette so that I have enough paint to work with. Adding water and then pulling it to the side and adding even more water. And add a bunch of water to get the wet light color. Dabbing off on my towel and testing it out again on my paper. And maybe a little bit more concentrated. Let's pick up a little bit more of that paint, add it to my water spot. Again, that doesn't look right. Maybe I had more in my brush than I knew. Testing it out again, I like that looks right. I'm adding it to the stems, bud, and leaves, like you see in step two's image. Again, not being too careful about where that paint lands does not need to stay within the lines. bud here too. And then dabbing on my towel. Now I'll be adding this drier darker color to the stamen and capsule. Dab that off on my towel. And there's a little stamen here on the capsule. And then there's just some squiggly lines. I'm just adding a little bit there and then the dot, the anthers there. And then I'm going to add it here to the stamen as well. Put the anther and the filament. It's kind of not being super exact, just kind of adding it in there. And right here, I let this yellow go over. I forgot to put the transfer line right there. And that's totally fine. So I'm going to clean off my brush. Let this dry and move on to step three. Step three, paint the wettest, lightest Columbine Green. So first mix the Columbine Green with two drops of the Fallow Green. Oh, didn't really want to come out. One, two. One drop of the Hansa Yellow Medium. Make sure to shake your bottles to ensure that the paint pigment is well mixed and you're getting the right concentration of color. And then we have one drop of the 24H burnt umber. I'm going to mix that up by adding just a little bit of water. And then I'm pulling it to the side. I'm gonna use the wettest, lightest color version of that F on your step-by-step. -step. I might dab my brush off a little bit on my towel and then add more water in my palette. And then I'm going to dab it on my towel and then test it out, see how it is. I think that turned out pretty good. And I'm just going to paint that to all the yellow areas as you see in step three's image and is listed. And then there's also this little spot here. So it's not all of the yellow areas, just the yellow areas you've seen when they're listed. So here on the stem, that little spot here, 
in the bud, in the leaves. And then here in the center, you can see the pistil. So I'm add a little green there. This stem, make sure not to paint in there because I don't really want the stem to be in that spot. Be a little yellow and that's fine. Just a sketch. It'd be fun to have that yellow color. A little bit of paint outside the lines here. Pulling it through, not being real exact, see more paint outside the lines, just doing a quick painting, taking too much time, not being too exact, just kind of relaxing. I'm going to pick up just a little bit more, adding just a tiny bit more water too, testing it out. Seems like it, the water evaporated pretty fast. Dabbing it off, testing it, oh, it looks good. I'm just gonna continue. Too much water, just dab it on your towel. It's too dark. Another good reason to dab it on your towel, and you can kind of just pull that dark color through. It's a little darker than here because I picked up new paint. That variation is good too. I just covered that entire leaf. A little tiny bit more, this little part on the capsule here. I'll clean off my brush and then move on to step four. Step four, paint columbine red, violet, and blue. Always make sure your painting dries between layers. And you can just kind of dab it to see if it's dry. If you move it, if it's wet and you're moving it out, your finger over it, it might smudge it. So first I'm going to mix the color, mix the Columbine Red Violet, and I'm going to use one drop of the 8H Ultramarine. And seven drops of the 3H Brilliant Cadmium Red, or Brilliant Cad Red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to add just a little bit of water and mix it up. And I'm going to be using the wettest, lightest, or least concentrated version of that color. I'm going to dab it off on my towel a little bit and then add some water. Maybe take a little bit more and add some water. Test it out on my paper. Looks like the right color to me. Dab it off on my towel again, pick some fresh paint up, dab it on my towel once more, and then I'm going to add it to the bud, capsule, and stem like you see in step four's image. So that goes over, it's a little dark, that's fine. Over the bud and into these spurs on the bud. And then on the Capsule. I'm gonna clean off my brush and paint in the driest, darkest Columbine blue. So I'm gonna pick up some of this blue color, adding a little bit of water to it so it moves well on my paper. Dabbing on my towel and seeing how it looks. Looks pretty good. It seems to move pretty well too. I'm adding that to the sepals and the spur. So each a little bit too much there. That's okay. Just the tip on that spur, and then this spur, I'm going to add it kind of to the center first. And then I'm going to want to create a little bit of a gradient, so I'm going to clean off my brush. And then take 
the tip of my clean brush and move it towards the other side. So cleaning it off whenever needed. If you want to make it a little bit lighter and that just kind of creates this little bit of a gradient. So kind of from the wet to the light. I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. Every time I paint, everything looks a little bit different. And you'll find that to be true for you too, depending on my mood, how I'm feeling on a given day, or just how my watercolor behaves. Now this my br water brush is a little bit it's a little heavy water coming out so I made kind of a strange gradient there and my placement of watercolor is not going to be the same as it was last time it's going to be a little bit different every time so when adding this color you just want to make sure you preserve some of that lighter color underneath added all of the blue go ahead and clean off your brush and move on to step five step five paint columbine green so paint in the dry dark columbine green G to the leaves and stems like you see in step five's image and want to avoid adding it to these edges and the veins just to create a little bit of a variation in that leaf color. So I'm gonna pick up that color. It looks like it got pretty dry. So I'm gonna add more water to it to get kind of a dry dark color similar to G. Test it out on my paper, it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and add it. And I'm going to start in the stem. And then I will add it to these leaves, trying to avoid this veins. Again, my brush is releasing a lot more water than I want right now. Picked up a little bit more and adding some more. And just kind of painting between the lines there. same thing and all these other leaves just kind of painting in between the lines to preserve the light color and then moving the paint from there up to the towards the edges not being super exact just kind of adding it in the same general area cleaned off my brush, I'd like to add a little bit of this reddish violet color to this tiny bud here, noticing in my final reference image a little bit there that I forgot to do. And then I want to add a little bit of the green. I cleaned off my brush. I'm going to add it to these stems as well on the leaves. Cleaning off my brush, and then I will move on to step six. 
Step six, paint in Columbine red, violet, and green. So I'm going to take this drier, darker red, violet, adding a little bit of water to it. I don't want it to be too concentrated. And I also want it to move well on my paper. Dab it off on my towel and test it out. Looks great. I like the color. I'm just gonna add it to the areas like I see in step six's image. So just a little bit on the bud here. And then a little bit to the capsule. Then I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to pick up a drier, darker green, so I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. Let's get a color similar to H. Test it out on my paper. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add it to the stems first and then to the leaves. So let's go ahead and add it in refer to step six's image in your final reference image for placement. And again, the leaves the same kind of thing. I'm just going to try to add it in to those areas I have already painted. So it'll be these, um, the lighter green areas, but you want to try to preserve a little bit of the color underneath as well, that lighter green. So kind of painting inside those lighter green spots or the leaves. And when you have all that painted in, you can look at it and decide whether you want more of any kind of paint. As long as the area is dry, feel free to add more wherever you like. And one thing I'm noticing is that I missed a little bit of the blue here. And so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that blue. It's always like, okay to go back and test it out. Looks good. I'm just gonna add it in there. A little wet, so I clean off my brush and I'm just gonna dab it to pick up some of that paint. Clean it off again. And even after I finish this with the ink, I can go back and add more paint or even more ink lines as long as it's dry. I don't wanna overwork it and keep going and after doing it over and over and over, but if there's something that's glaringly missing to you or that you'd really like to change, you can always do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. So I'm going to use the black 005 micron to write in the common name and the scientific name. So I'm just going to outline that and then write in the scientific name. And then I'm going to redraw all the lines that I transferred as well. And I can refer to my transfer image, my final reference image, and the image in step 7a. So just go ahead and protect your in painting while you're working with maybe your transfer image. And make sure you redefine those lines based on where your paint ended up while you were painting. So maybe the lines are a little bit outside of where they started. Maybe they're a little bit inside. Just remain, just go ahead and draw them in.
Next, I'm going to use the 01 Black Micron to rewrite the scientific name and to thicken some of the lines in the flower, bud, and capsule like you see in 7A. Lastly, I'm going to add the thicker black 08 micron lines. I'm going to use that to fill in the common name and make sure not to put your hand in it until it dries or does smudge. And then I'm also just going to kind of thicken lines all throughout based on my final reference image and 7B. I like the way this looks, so I'm done. I'm gonna leave it like this. You can feel free to add a little bit more ink or paint, whatever you like, if you need it. As I mentioned before, just try not to get too carried away with it. This is just a sketch. We're done, great job. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and had a chance to relax a little. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Next, you have a few options of what to do with this painting. You can gift it, frame it, punch holes in it, and add it to your sketchbook. Also share it on our Facebook fan art page. Don't forget to check out our website for future lesson crates at www.naturesketchcrate.com and sign up for our newsletter for regular updates.